What are robots? Will robots take our jobs? Are robots ever going to turn against us? To me, robots are allies. They are enemies. They are learning. They are becoming smarter, more athletic, and the list goes on. One thing certain, robots are not perfect, at least not yet. We are the creators, developers, and inventors of these creatures. It is our duty to simultaneously build them and put them into our society in a fashion that serves most of mankind. The chances are high that robots are indeed the future. Thus, it is imperative that the field of robotics and all that it encompasses be of interest to every single one of us. Good evening, everyone. It is great to have you all here. My name is Wachuku Obina. I am 23 years old and Nigerian. I have been living in Hungary for five years now, ish in Beselek Kichit Magyaro. I got my first degree here. I got my first degree here in mechanical engineering, and I'll be graduating with a master's in mechatronics in February, at least if I can pass my state exams. I recently submitted my thesis project, which involved the development of an aerial robot, meaning a robot that can fly. I'm here today to give you a fetching view of my journey and experience of my first personal robotics project. I hope that this inspires more individuals to take a leap of faith and dive into the field of robotics. This is Movie Turn. Leslie Mitchell reporting. A robot for industry. And this is it, Unimate, a machine that can reach out to seven feet and perform a multitude of tasks in factory or laboratory as skillfully as a man, but without getting tired. As skillfully as a man, but without getting tired. Do you know how much as skillfully as a man, but without getting tired, would cost you back then? Roughly about $25,000, yes, US dollars. That gives you an equivalent buying power of 225,000 US dollars today. This robot, Unimate, which is the first industrial robot, and a robot working in a typical manufacturing factory, weighs about 3,500 pounds. To give you an idea of how heavy that is, Imagine a th a, the total weight of a Toyota Prius with a grizzly bear sitting on top of it. It is also important to note that this robot has an accuracy of one millimeter, but very low precision. Imagine you had this target board here. High accuracy and high precision would look something like this. Sorry. Okay. So, all the arrows are tightly close together. That's precision. And at the bullseye, that's high accuracy. Now, low accuracy and low precision would look something like this. All the arrows are far from each other, but nowhere near the bullseye. Now, in the case of Unimate, which recall has high accuracy, but very low precision, would look something like this.
get into it. And if you with motion control, enable the Da Vinci Surgeon to transcend the limitations of conventional surgical technologies, making new minimally invasive options possible for complex surgical procedures. Today, we have Da Vinci, the first surgical system. One of these robotic systems would cost you $2 million. Not only does this robot have higher accuracy as well as higher precision, he is able to perform such a complex task as surgery. Within a span of 60 years, we were able to go from performing repetitive and relatively simple tasks in a factory to carrying out a high risk and life endangering surgery. It is just so overwhelming to observe such advancements. And this observation was enough to draw my field, draw my attention to the field of robotics. My interest in aerobotics, specifically quadrotors, first began when a friend of mine, my ex girlfriend, friend, so sent this TEDx video to me. To be athletic? We will demonstrate the concept of machine athleticism and our research to achieve it with the help of these flying machines called quadrocopters, or quads for short. It was during the first semester of my master's program that she sent this to me. I remember sitting down and smiling and telling myself that one day I'll put one of my own together. <laughs> At the moment, it was just a thought in my head, but one that wouldn't leave. That summer, I went home to visit my family, and I cannot explain the kind of comfort I get at home. It is almost as if they take into consideration that I've been working relentlessly the whole semester, and summer is like a gifted two months vacation, especially when grandma is there. And this particular summer she was. Let me explain what that means. An unlimited supply of good food, and that comes with a delivery service with broadband coverage across the house. <coughs> it wasn't until, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was only two days until I got bored and tired and boredom started to creep in. And then having nothing to do was driving me nuts. This led to what I call a pseudo summer semester of Coursera. Some of you might be wondering what Coursera is. Coursera is a service that offers free as well as paid online courses and recently degrees. So here's what I decided to do. I decided to register for the several courses that summer, about four of them, ranging from web programming to MATLAB programming, machine learning, and aerorobotics. The difficult part was taking part in each of all these courses at the same time, but I developed a strategy. The plan was going through a week's material in a day. It was quite ambitious, but at the end of that summer, I had earned four Coursera certificates. It wasn't until the second semester of my master's program that I decided I would assemble a quadrotor for my thesis. <coughs> when, I, when I decided, made that decision, I found Coursera had helped me a lot, but it showed me that there was much, much more to learn. I was attending classes, they were helping, but they were not just enough. I found myself having unending conversations with Google, attending and presenting at scientific conferences, and I just couldn't stop reading. When I felt that I had accomplished enough theoretical knowledge. It was the next line of action was to assemble the robot. It was at this stage that I realized what I had and what I didn't have. I had a lot of theoretical knowledge, but I had no experience and no personal tools. It took a while before I got all the necessary materials and equipment to assemble the first version. After all of that, and testing the robot for the first time, here's what we have.
devastating, isn't it? But let me let you in on something interesting. This is in my robot. As you can see, this video is also from YouTube. But my robot was similar, the first version, in that it, had, it was the exact same frame. And also, it's also important to note that the owner of this robot had the exact same problem I had. With more persistence and research, I found out that the problem was a malfunctioning component. It took another week to get the replacement components and test the robot again. Here's what we have this time. It works, I screamed to myself as I saw it elevate. You might ask yourself, well, it's not that high, but you have no idea how my body and my hands were trembling. I wanted nothing to go wrong. As long as it wasn't flipping, all I cared about was taking it a little bit high and setting it back down. After testing it a few more times indoors and building confidence in the robot, I decided it was time to test it outdoors. Here's a video of an outdoor test. Look at me smiling. Every time, every time I would fly the robot, it would just feel unreal. I was flying what I pieced together. It was awesome. It was amazing. It was mine. But then, of course, I got bored of it. It was too simple, and it needed an upgrade. The next version featured legs. I, because I needed more space. With legs, I could keep the battery directly under the robot, leaving room at the top. And at the top, I could add a few extra components, including an external compass and GPS. <coughs> it felt very different to fly. I had to take more care at landings and takeoffs because it had more weight and it wasn't as symmetrical. After a while, I needed more components because I wanted to perform higher level tasks. So I sat days on end trying to come up with a solution until I decided enough is enough. It would be a complete makeover from scratch. Bigger frame, old components, new components, version 3.0 had to be the one. And ladies and gentlemen, this is version 3.0. <laughs> it, wasn't, it, wasn't it wasn't until the completion of this version and taking it out for a test run that I decided to start writing my thesis. For I had a version of the quadcopter that I could pass as a master's in mechatronics project. In my thesis, I do not only describe the development process of this aero robot, but I also comment on an issue that is apparent within the Department of Mechatronics here at the University of Debrecen. In order to conclude this section of my thesis, as the Vice President of the International Student Union concerning educational matters at the University of Debrecen's engineering faculty, I decided that the union hold a robotics challenge event. It was during the course of organizing this event that I realized 
I was right all I confirmed I was right all along. People are interested in the field of robotics. All they need is a little push and for somebody to show them the fun side of things. Remember, it is only by taking a leap that great things, that great heights are, achieved, are reached. Good night, everyone. <laughs>